Hi, I'm Jessica Bruin from Nano Imaging Services, and I'm here to talk to you about small molecule structure determination using MicroD. So microcrystal electron diffraction, or MicroD, also known as continuous rotation electron diffraction, works by placing crystals onto a TEM grid, putting that into a microscope, exposing the crystal to a very small electron beam and collecting a diffraction pattern. When this is coupled with continuous rotation of the stage, we can collect a diffraction data set that is collected in the way the vast majority of X-ray crystallography data is collected, uh, which allows us to use all of the software packages written for X-ray crystallography to process our data. As I'm sure everyone is aware, this field has been growing rapidly since the first protein structure was determined by this method in 2013 by the Gonin lab. Here we've plotted the number of novel protein and peptide structures deposited in the PDB from electron diffraction, as well as uh, structures deposited in the Cambridge Structural Database, the CSD for small molecules. As you can see, there's been a much more rapid growth of uh, adoption for this technique for the determination of small molecule and peptide structures compared to proteins. This is because small molecule and proteins have drastically different um, properties that make uh, structure determination for proteins much more challenging. So small molecules are typically the ones at least that we're working with are supplied as dry crystals, which can easily be placed onto a grid and put in the microscope. Proteins, on the other hand, are grown in aqueous solution, and this buffer um, needs to be kept around the crystals, otherwise they lose their diffracting qualities. And this buffer adds uh, another layer of complexity when preparing grits. Um, additionally, small molecule crystals typically diffract to higher resolution than protein crystals and typically have higher intensities, all of which make data processing much easier for small molecules. Crystal structure determination uh, for small molecules in the pharmaceutical industry is incredibly important and um, this uh, importance of this has been increasingly recognized by the FDA and uh, the FDA typically requires that anything submitted for an IND filing have a crystal structure associated with it. So this is because crystal structures um, give you a much more higher confidence in your model compared to structures from NMR or from mass spectrometry or any other technique out there. Additionally, you can uh, determine the relative configuration of all stereocenters using crystallography. The absolute configuration is often possible when using x-rays. Additionally, you can understand information about the lattice that is building up this crystal, um, which has important implications for things like solubility and stability. And there's a whole branch of solid formulations um, aimed at understanding the crystals that small molecules form and how to manipulate these and engineer them to have better properties. So here's a, a good example of a drug candidate molecule that was patented and about to enter clinical trials when an academic group published a crystal structure of this compound and showed that the structure in the patent was actually not correct. And in looking at this molecule, you can see that these isomers would be extremely difficult to distinguish by mass spec and NMR. And really it requires crystallography to distinguish the correct one over the incorrect one. So when thinking about crystal determination methods available for small molecules uh, for pharmaceutical crystals, the three methods available or most widely used are single crystal x-ray diffraction. Hands down, single crystal x-ray diffraction is the most common method used. It produces really high quality data and has very quick turnaround times. It's a very well established field and this is definitely the method of choice if you have large enough crystals. As I alluded to, the big con for this uh, technique is that you do need large enough crystals to collect data from. So for a benchtop diffractometer or home source, you typically need crystals of about 50 microns in size or larger to get uh, reasonable data. You can get away with slightly smaller crystals for synchrotron sources, but not every group has access to the synchrotron and the vast majority of uh, crystal structures are determined with bench shop diffractometers. MicroD is a wonderful alternative for single crystal x-ray diffraction when the crystals are too small for x-ray collection. MicroD can work with crystals in the 0.2 to 2 micron range, which makes it a nice complementary technique for uh, capturing those that fail single crystal x-ray diffraction. I'd also like to include that x-ray powder diffraction is another method that doesn't really have a crystal size limitation associated with it, which is really nice. But there are some drawbacks to this technique. One, it typically requires synchrotron data to get high enough quality data for structure solution based on a powder diffraction pattern. Additionally, data processing is incredibly challenging 
and the data is typically lower quality and have a much higher likelihood of getting an incorrect solution. And so in my mind, MicroD is poised to really uh, replace X-ray powder diffraction as a method for determining structures when the, the crystals are just too small for single crystal X-ray diffraction. So here at Nano Imaging Services, we've built a MicroD pipeline uh, for small molecule structure determination. This starts with a client submitting sample to us. Preferably, we ask for about a milligram of powdered sample, and we ask that our clients, if they're able to, that they confirm that the sample is crystalline by using powder diffraction. We will then prepare a grid, typically by just uh, dabbing a TEM grid against a pile of powder and tapping off the excess. We'll then place this into a TEM microscope. We're using a Glacios microscope. So this is a 200 kilovolt microscope equipped with a SATA D camera. And we will use our microscope to screen for crystals and collect diffraction data with our automated software. So for an easy case, we'll typically collect about 20 data sets and that takes about two hours. For more challenging cases, we'll set up for an overnight collection, maybe getting about 150 data sets in eight hours. Occasionally we'll go back and prep another grid if we don't see good crystals on the first attempt. The next step is the data processing, which is broken into data reduction and phasing steps. And in easy cases, we can typically solve the structure within an hour or two of data collection. For more challenging cases, it might take a couple of days uh, for us to come to a solution. This process is very iterative. We often go back to the data reduction stage and try different combinations of data from different crystals, different indexing uh, strategies, different scaling procedures, and occasionally we'll go back and collect additional data so at Nanoimaging Services, we are using Legendon to collect data. We uh, adapted this software program, Angie Chang primarily driving this, uh, to collect uh, microD data automatically. So we'll start by taking um, images of the crystals in lower magnification in imaging mode with the microscope. We can then select our crystals of interest, and so that's manually targeting these crystals. Um, we can test for diffraction using preview mode, and then we can queue up crystals for automated data collection. So the automated data collection works by centering the crystal in X, Y, and Z, putting the beam into diffraction mode and, and making the beam very small. So we're using a, uh, about a 600 nanometer beam on our crystals. And then we will synchronize the rotation of the stage with data collection in rolling shutter mode and collect a nice diffraction movie like the one showing there. So we recently published a paper where we looked at um, more than 50 samples um, submitted by our clients um, across the pharmaceutical industry. These are small molecule samples. And so here's a look at the types of samples we were examining. So they ranged in size from 400 to about 1,000 Daltons. In some cases, they did not contain any atoms larger than oxygen, which can make data processing and structure solution phasing more challenging. Uh, but we were really encouraged that even for these rather large compounds and these compounds lacking any heavy atoms, we were still able to determine structures. Here's a look at the typical outcomes we were achieving. So of the 60 compounds that we looked at, 51 of these produced data that we expect to be uh, suitable for structure solution. In three of the cases, we were not able to find any diffracting crystals, likely because the sample was amorphous. In those three cases, the, the client did not perform X-ray powder diffraction before submitting samples. And then in another six cases, we were unable to get enough data to solve the structure, even though we did find diffracting crystals. I've also plotted the resolutions that we've, we achieved um, from these crystals and point out that the majority of the crystals diffracted better than 1.1 angstroms, which is really important because that's about the point at which phasing by ab initio methods gets much more challenging and uh, your confidence in the model goes down quite a bit. Just to remind everyone, in small molecule uh, crystallography, we rely heavily on very, very accurate bond lengths to accurately assign atom types. And so this is very important that we have high resolution data to get a high confidence model. So in summary, microD structure determination is much easier for small molecules compared to proteins, um, likely contributing to its faster rise in adoption across both industry and academia. MicroED is a nice complement to single crystal X-ray diffraction when a high quality model is required and crystal size is limited, when there's not enough time, material, or expertise for crystallization trials. 
Typical small molecule samples submitted to nanoimaging services achieved 0.9 to 1.1 angstroms with a few in the 1.1 to 1.6 angstrom range. But thankfully, this lower resolution data did not prevent structure solution from the subset analyzed. And we expect microD adoption to continue to grow across the pharmaceutical industry with uh, contract research organizations such as ours playing an important role in driving this adoption. With that, I'd like to thank my team, Angie Chang and Giovanna, especially our collaborators, everyone in the crystallography and microscopy field, and especially our clients. Thank you.